So we figured out that no matter how much money we had in grants, we didn't have the means to do this fine-scale analysis of the presence of the disease over the several hundred of miles already infested by sudden of death. And so the idea came up um, walking with two volunteers that were helping me on another project of, hey, we can help you actually detect and, and survey for the disease at a very fine scale because we love going around our neighborhood. And if you teach us how to do it, then we can do it for you. The program is called the Sudden Oak Death Blitzes uh, because we like people to go in the forest, more or less everybody goes at the same time and they sample intensively uh, an area during a weekend so that we know that all the samples uh, were collected in the same condition. My name is Leah Green. I'm currently a student at Berkeley City College and I'm part of a program that allows students to work at the UC Berkeley Forest Pathology Lab. Uh, one of the things that we do is the Sod Blitz project and I have been participating in it for two years. My name is Natalie Chapman. I'm a biological lab sciences student at Berkeley City College. Um, I'd like to know more about the sample collection process and my motivation for getting involved is that uh, sudden oak death is a really serious problem in California and it needs addressing. These are a good example of symptomatic bay leaves. They have brown tips and a yellow halo around them. So they'll be good for sampling. Now I'm gonna use the Sod Map mobile app to get the coordinates of our location. You turn on the app and the app will show you in a graphic format all of the trees that are infected in your neighborhood. But it will also calculate how likely it is that your oak will become infected because we actually wanted uh, people to collect samples and we wanted to test every single sample that was collected in the lab. We're at the University of California at Berkeley in the Forest Pathology and Mycology Laboratory processing our field samples that we took for sudden oak death. What our students here are doing is they are going through the samples that have been collected by um, people in their own communities up and down the state of California and punching out a small portion of the leaf that we believe may be infected with Phytophthora romorum, the causal agent of sudden oak death. These are mostly California bay laurel leaves, which are a vector for the sudden oak death pathogen. And our student researchers are sampling these leaves in a very systematic way so that we can then extract the DNA from these samples and test genetically for the presence of the sudden oak death pathogen. About April through July, we get the samples processed, and then we do the genetic analysis in July and August, and we usually have the results ready at the end of October and the beginning of November. So it's quite a long process and involves hundreds of person hours uh, of direct laboratory work to do this. And of course, we do it for free. Without their help, we would never be able to sample so extensively and so completely from year to year. Ultimately, the goal of this project is to provide better information for people who are studying the spread of sudden oak death and to give the people of the state of California better information which will help them understand and hopefully in the future mitigate the spread of sudden oak death. The results of the Sod Blitz survey project are available to the public in the fall of each year on sodblitz.org. And so this was the first example of in the world of a large-scale citizen science project that actually contributed real data that has been used in modeling and prediction of spread of the disease in a way that's, that's never been done before. We also like to call it community science because the project is not done at the individual level. So people don't just go online and you know, download the information. They actually gather in local communities and they do the search together. And often once the results come in, they join forces to do the treatment. We have 30 such community science um, activities throughout the state, and people really like going back to, to their group every year to find out what's new, uh, what new developments there are about sudden death, are there any new treatments. 
So really, uh, we look at this as a grassroots activity and Berkeley basically coordinates the whole activity, but each community is responsible for rallying up the troops, for sending out the messages, for also sharing the new information. And surprisingly, we, are, we were the first citizen science project where data are published in real time on the web. One year, we had 500 people who collected samples and the data were um, used by 3 million people. So huge, I mean, this is exactly how you can augment the impact of what you're doing by working with the community. So there is that impact that rather than just a scientific publication, uh, the public hears about this project where data are generated by the public and it really entices them to look at the data because it's, it's significant for them. Um, it, will, it will make a difference between death or life for their trees. Mm -hmm.